After tens of thousands of hours spent in the ocean chasing waves, hundreds of hours coaching beginner and intermediate surfers, I've realized that paddling is just as important of a skill as actually standing and riding your surfboard. I've chatted a lot about this before, the fact that 95% of all your surfing sessions will be spent paddling around, sitting or waiting. And I've had this reinforced lately by watching surfers with good wave riding ability have their sessions totally compromised by poor paddling technique. I think it's something we definitely need to talk about. Guys, my name is Kale Brock and today I'm gonna to talk about all things paddling. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and join me on Instagram at Kale's Broccoli. You, let's get into it. <laughs> You'll know that paddling requires a unique type of fitness because even super athletic people from other sports struggle with it initially. It's not just a fitness of the arms and shoulders. Paddling, maybe surprisingly, is actually an entire body skill. It involves the arms, obviously, but also the core, back and glute muscles too. I can't emphasize this enough. The degree to which you progress from beginner through to intermediate and eventually advanced is as much attributed to paddling as it is to your skill standing up on a wave. Paddling enables you to be in position for waves as they come in. It allows you to enter waves with enough velocity to make standing up and picking your line easy. And of course, it allows you to get back out there and do it all again. We've established why all this is important, but now let's talk about actually how to do it. Here is the perfect paddling technique. As a surfer hops on their board, the middle of their chest should align with the stringer of the board. This indicates where the middle is and is a good reference point to use for your body position. Lengthwise, we can gauge the correct position by noticing the tip of the surfboard just hanging out above the water as you move along. The arms are used cyclically with long reaches forward into the water and a subsequent pulling motion. As one arm pulls, the other dives forward to initiate another paddle stroke. Notice how the surfer's hand is slightly cupped during this time. This slightly cupped hand shape creates a nice vortex between the fingers which displaces water and propels you forward each paddle. Some surfers include a slight S motion as they bring their hand through to further increase that forward propulsion. The arms enter the water to about tricep depth, allowing for a solid lever type action to occur from the shoulder. Paddling without putting your arms in deep enough will result in an ineffective technique, wasted effort with each stroke and wasted waves. So that is really the essence of paddling, but there's actually a lot more to discuss. In particular, the activation of the upper torso and the glutes. Essentially, what I'm talking about is the erect banana. I can't believe how many people have stopped me in the surf to talk about erect bananas now. <laughs> The reason we use the banana analogy is because ideally we want the body shape to match that of a banana. This is a super important topic to chat about because not only does this position enable for a better, more sustainable paddling technique, it also protects our upper thoracic spine. And I thought who better to talk about the importance of this concept than my very own chiropractor, who also happens to be called Kale. A lot of the pivot point happens at C6 and C7 here and that's surface neck essentially. The joints become inflamed, jo uh, the disc itself starts to erode, largely because we don't have enough extension through the lower part, which is the thoracic spine. Now we wanna try and create extension here. That allows the neck to move more freely, but we also use our lats and our rhomboids and our mid and low traps properly in order to allow us to paddle. Therefore, we keep the upper traps lower and less tension off the neck as well. 
The best part about paddling and paddling practice is that you can do it without actual waves. To work the muscles which will help your banana become activated, you can do this kind of reverse plank position on the floor. The goal should be to hold this for three minutes at a time, with the thumbs facing upward and emphasis on the activation of the middle back, not just the lower back. Additionally, you can also use a Swiss ball to train these muscles by lying on top of it and then curling back up like this. With your arms, make a Y shape, then a T shape, then a W shape to cover all the muscles here. You can add one or two kilogram dumbbells in your hands to increase the intensity of the exercise. The reason I spend so much time on this banana shape concept is because it really provides such a game changing effect to one's surfing ability. Not only does it ensure that you catch lots of waves throughout your session, it also ensures you don't get that build up of neck tension that a lot of us think is inherent in our surfing career. Now, I want to point out a difference between intense, short duration paddling, which might occur as you scratch into a wave, and long term, more endurance paddling. Endurance paddling is essentially what we've been talking about. The banana is essential for good, sustainable paddling posture. But that being said, as you paddle into a wave or try to break free of some white water after a duck dive, it can actually be helpful to lean forward and lengthen the neck to urge yourself forward through the water. This is fine when done in the short term as a little boost of speed, but it isn't possible to maintain throughout an entire session, so be careful. You can also kick your feet to increase the speed and intensity as well, meaning more waves and more fun. Just on that quickly, a lot of people ask about where the feet should be and what should they do. Really, the entire body needs to be as aquadynamic as possible, so the feet should be in a position that allows them to flow nicely with you as you paddle. Sometimes I fold one foot over the other, and other times I have them tight side by side. It's really just about keeping them out of the way. It's really important to know that the type of board, the shape of board that you ride will have a dramatic impact on the effectiveness of your paddling. And there are some pros and cons for big boards and small boards too. Generally speaking, bigger, more buoyant boards paddle faster and catch waves more easily. However, once on the wave, each will perform differently. I like to ride short boards as they offer more radical maneuverability on a wave once I'm riding. So paddling on short boards is affected by one main factor, the volume of the board. I generally sit around 27.5 litres for my ideal volume. I know this because my board doesn't sink excessively or feel like it inhibits my paddling too much and I don't have too much trouble paddling into waves. If you feel that sinking sensation whilst paddling your board, you may need to up the volume on your next one. Keep in mind though that the bigger your board gets and the more buoyant it is, the harder it will be to duck dive and this is an important factor when considering which one to ride. I find that practicing paddling on bigger boards is excellent and offers a good crossover onto the smaller boards when you do transition for some good waves. Finding some flat water to put everything that we've talked about into practice is going to be really helpful for you because it means you don't have to wait for some swell to come, you don't have to wait for the perfect conditions and there tends to be a really good crossover to when you actually hop back on uh, the surfboard to get some waves. Now I talk about this stuff so often it's not even funny. I actually think your surfing ability is going to be a very close reflection of how well you can paddle. That's how close those two are intimately linked and rely on one another. I don't think it's very easy to rip on a wave if you can't paddle effectively and catch lots of them. So I really hope this video helped you guys out. This might be the last video for the year, I'm not sure. If I don't see you again, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. If you're new here and you enjoyed the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Let me know below in the comments what else you're struggling with. That'll help us direct the New Year's content. And you can join me on Instagram as well, at Kale's Broccoli. For now, I'll see you soon.
Viu?